Private Lender Podcast, Episode 19. The Private Lender Podcast quote of the day comes to us from Will Rogers, who said, Too many people spend money they earned to buy things they don't want to impress people that they don't like. This is the Private Lender Podcast, the show that shares practical advice and know-how for new and seasoned lenders, from private mortgages on single-family houses to joint ventures on commercial projects and beyond. Discover details about investment vehicles that you won't find at your local bank or online broker. Listen and learn from private lenders and real estate investors, as well as from professionals and entrepreneurs, as they share the details, strategies, and the insight that allows for successful and prosperous lending. Now, get ready to increase your ROI. Here's your host, Keith Baker. Greetings, Lender Nation, and welcome to the Private Lender Podcast. I'm your host, Keith Baker, and thank you for spending your time and sharing it with me today. Look, it is early May in Houston, and we are having some amazingly beautiful spring weather. So full disclosure, right out of the gate, episode 19, I got a few in me. I'm not going to lie. It's a beautiful day outside. The Cardinals, the Blue Jays, the Mockingbirds, and the Morning Doves are just out in all their majesty. The weather's beautiful. The humidity is low. And if you know what I'm talking about, if you ever step foot, even at the airport in Houston, you know that a low humidity day is a great day. So if you hear a little clink of ice, maybe a little liquid, then you'll understand why this episode is going to take so long. Today, episode 19, this is going to be a solo cast. No interview today, and I wanted to go over a few things, and I, I almost started to call this the Wall Street rant, but I'll, I will save that for another time. And today's episode is going to be called the Private Lender Manifesto. Uh, so it's still going to be a rant, but it's going to be a little different than what I had envisioned originally. Uh, first thing, though, I want to talk about a few things that are coming up, a few events I'll be at. First off, on May 31st of this year, I will be at the Rich Club. That's a Thursday evening from 6.30 to 9.30. I'll be teaching a class called Introduction to Private Lending or Intro to Private Lending. So if you're interested in this and you want to see what, um, you, know, what, what you, you might be able to get out of it, I highly encourage you to go to therichclub.org and sign up for that class. Thursday, May 31st. Also, I'm going to be in Dallas on August 25th and 26th at the Quest IRA. IOA. Wow, I do got some in me. <laughs> I do. I apologize for that poor grammar. Anyway, I uh, I will be at the Quest IRA Expo in Dallas on August 25th and 26th, and I highly recommend if you're anywhere in the area, come on out. It's going to be quite amazing. There are going to be people from all over the country, investors. Uh, vendors, uh, just a whole slew of people and businesses that are going to be represented there. I'll be on a panel talking about technology and uh, IRA and lending, self-directed IRAs and and lending. So I'll also have a booth and I'll be recording some episodes while we're there. So August 25th and 26th in Dallas, go to Quest IRA for more information, questira.com that is. So at this time, I'd like to go ahead and thank some of the sponsors of this wonderful podcast. So let's go ahead and do that right now. The Private Lender Podcast is proudly sponsored by the following. The Realty Investment Community of Houston, or Rich Club, is the premier real estate association in Southeast Texas. The Rich Club provides its members with the education, resources, leads, and networking they need to earn more wealth with their real estate investments. The Rich Club has helped thousands of real estate investors realize their full potential, and they are ready to help you. Visit their website at richclub.org for more details. That's richclub.org. 713 Houston Area Real Estate Networking with Landon Rothstein and Ray Sasser. Come out and experience one of the fastest growing meetups of real estate investors. Visit privatelenderpodcast.com slash sponsors for more information regarding 713 Houston Area Real Estate Networking Meetup. And now, back to the show. All right, we're back. And so here begins the rant or the manifesto, the private lender manifesto that I just spoke about. So last week, I was in New York City for a conference uh, called PowerCon. And this year's topic was the aging energy infrastructure. So pipelines, refineries, so on and so forth. And it was it was extremely eye-opening to see just where uh, the various... Um, what the different types of energy 
sources that we use in this in this country from you know, hydroelectric in Washington State. There's a ton of that there, uh, all the way down to you know gas and coal uh, coal fired electricity. It was it was quite interesting to see all this. But while I was there, I decided to go down to Wall Street and kind of hang out a little bit because you know, everyone assumes I'm just anti Wall Street, and that that's probably a pretty good assumption. Um, especially my rhetoric is a little damning towards Wall Street generally. Um, I think all you need to do is, and I highly recommend this to, to anyone who's, who can hear my voice right now, go rent The Wolf of Wall Street. It's a little graphic in parts. However, watch the first five minutes. Watch the first scene, or one of the first scenes when Matthew McConaughey's character takes Leonardo DiCaprio's character to lunch. And I really and truly believe that scene encapsulates Wall Street to a T. It distills it down to what it is you need to know. Which leads me to my belief that Wall Street is a stacked game. Much like going into a casino, the odds are stacked towards the house. And as long as you know that, it's fine. It's okay. But I I truly believe that a lot of people don't realize just how it is stacked. Just how the game is designed for, for 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 the brokers, for the investment bankers. And not to say they don't deserve their due. I'm not trying to say that. But when it comes to taking control of your own investments and your own finances and your own future, this is something I think everybody needs to know. And it's good that they know. That when you walk into a casino or you walk into Wall Street, your 401k, your Fidelity account when you're buying individual stocks, whatever it may be, Know this, the odds are stacked in the house's favor. You can still win. That doesn't mean you can't win. It doesn't mean you can't be smart and figure out the game and how to maneuver within it, because a lot of people do. And let's face it, we have enjoyed quite a run since Trump got in office. Whether you like him or not, whether you voted for him or not, we've been on a hell of a run. Now, I'm not saying this is Trump's. This is due to Trump. This is just a fact. Since the election, things have gone sparkling, uh, just amazingly well. On Wall Street. And you know what happens. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. That's just good old Newtonian physics. The market's been going up for a long time, and I'm just waiting for that equal and opposite reaction to bring it back down to parity, or maybe not not, not so much parity, but maybe even just some sensibility. So if you're out there driving to work right now thinking I'm crazy, and you're probably right, but I have been drinking. But nonetheless, I don't think what I'm saying is incorrect. Just just know that Wall Street is like a casino in the house. The odds are stacked to the favor of the house. Now, while I was on my trip to New York last week, I picked up the Wall Street Journal at the airport and I was reading it. And I even posted on social media that the Fed is watching inflation and inflation has hit 2%, which is kind of their target. So that means that rate hikes, interest rates are probably going to go up. I mean, it stands to reason that if in interest rates are the way that the Fed keeps inflation in check, then we're probably going to look at some interest rates rising soon. So, but the funny thing is, when I got home from my trip to New York, there was a solicitation in the mail from American Express National Bank, and it says, compare American Express personal savings to your bank's rate. And they say the national APY, or annual percentage yield, with two asterisks, which means the national average APY is accurate as of February 27th of this year, 2018. As published in the FDIC's weekly national rates and rate caps, average rate is used for deposits under $100,000. So that's just to give you an idea. The national average is 0.07%. Right, that's not even one percent. That is seven tenths of a percent is the national average, and yet American Express National Bank is advertising they will pay you one point five five percent APY annual percentage yield, as advertised, accurate as of two twenty seven twenty eighteen, subject to change. I'm sorry, subject to change at any time without notice before and after a high yield savings account is opened. So. This is an advertisement for a high yield savings account at 1.55% annual percentage yield. 
Now, that begs the question of what's the difference between APR and APY. Let's just assume for a second. APY, 1.55. You're gonna For every $100 you put into their bank, you're going to get $1.55 a year in interest. And the Fed just announced that inflation is at 2%. So by putting your money in a high-yield savings account, even if you just want to keep it safe and you don't want to lose any money, you know, and, and, and I get that. I, I totally get you put some money back. You save it. You earn it. You save it. You put it back. You're not spending it. You're saving money. However, you're losing 0.45% per year without any other rate hikes, rate hikes. So you're losing money in these accounts. And this is why I started the Private Lender Podcast. It's because if you have $5,000, okay, fine. Keep it in a savings account maybe, 1000 whatever, something small. But once you start getting to 10 20 30 50 you might as well go get a solid 8 to 12% per year on your money. And if you do it right, you can mitigate the risk now, because that, that's going to be the big argument. People are going, "Hey, well, you know, money's in the bank; it's FDIC insured," and that's true. It is. And if you go put your money on a loan into a loan on a house on a piece of property, it's not FDIC insured. You can lose money, but you're already losing money in FDIC insured investments already. And I would even call a savings account an investment or a money market account an investment. It's more cash flow management. I get that. But with just a little bit of extra work, you can mitigate risks and you can make more money. You can certainly beat inflation and then some. But it does take some effort. And it's up to you. Now I'm going to get evangelical here. Your future is up to you. Your financial future. The world is changing very fast. And I'm going to, I think there are three steps that need to be taken. And believe me, I need to take my own medicine too. So before anyone thinks that I'm just all hot air, which you know, you're know you mostly right, but I tend to take my own advice, or at least I'm going to tell you I'm going to take my own advice. And the three steps are this. One, take responsibility. Simple. It's your responsibility to make sure that you can retire. It's your responsibility to make sure that your family is going to be taken care of. It's your responsibility and nobody else's. And I don't think this is, this is said enough. Certainly not on, on television, not on CNN, not on Fox News, none of, the, none of it. Nobody's saying this enough. It's your responsibility. You need to put the weight on your shoulders. I need to put the weight on my shoulders. But we each, every one of us needs to take responsibility for our finances, for our future, for our family, whatever that, however that family is composed, it's up to each of us. If you're listening, it's up to you. It's up to me. Second step is to take control. It's to not just blindly put money into a 401k at your office and think that, hey, that, that's, this is going to get me through retirement. Let me tell you something. It's 2018. If you are under the age of 50, the odds of Social Security being there when you need it are slim to none. So it's your responsibility. So let's just go ahead and assume. Let's assume that Social Security is not going to be there. So any and all retirement, any and all medical. And let's just go ahead and assume that Medicaid is not going to be there for us either. I'm sure something will be, but if for planning purposes, assume the worst. Assume nothing is going to be there and that your retirement is up to you. And then three, take action. That's the big catchphrase. That's the million-dollar question. How do you get people to take action? It's easy for me to sit here and tell you to do it. It is. I I, I fully admit it. But it's something that has to be done. You have to take action, and you have to create your future with your own hands. Those are the three macro steps, The, the, the private lender manifesto, so to speak. That's where it all starts. Take responsibility, take control, and then take action. And continue to take action. Now, how do I recommend that you do that? If you are brand new, this is the first episode you're listening to, I got a couple of suggestions for you. One, read, or they're both books, actually. The first book is read The Richest Man in Babylon. 
It's a great book. Just good old fashioned old world principles that don't change. Whether it's 5,000 years ago in the time of Moses, if it was 2,000 years ago in the time of Christ, 600 years ago in the time of Muhammad, it doesn't matter, or today. These old world principles are still relevant and they need to be followed. I highly recommend The Richest Man in Babylon. And once you finish that book, then I recommend reading another book called The Millionaire Next Door. It's fascinating. It talks about just the differences of people who are millionaires and the people who exude the illusion or the facade that they're millionaires. You know, there are bus drivers who live well below their means, make smart investments, and retire better than they ever did while they were working. And I know, and you know, look, I'm a part of the Atari generation, Generation X, the Nintendo generation. I get it. We want it. We want it now. If you think the millennials are bad, where do you think they got it from? Where do you think the precursor was? My generation, Gen X. However, read these two books. Get your mind right. Get your mindset right. Which leads me into the last part of the manifesto today. Somebody asked me if I had all the money in the world, what would I do? And I thought about it for a moment and I said, you know, I would, I would volunteer to teach at local universities. I would teach introduction, intro to philosophy classes. I would teach intro to German classes because those were my passions when I was in school. That's what my degree is in. Yeah. The Private Lender Podcast, philosophy and German major. Yep. I studied to be unemployed, but I loved it. I loved every minute of it. And that's what I would do because I would teaching is what I'd like to do. However, not a huge demand, and I certainly wasn't going to be one of 35 people applying for a job at some small university just to teach intro to philosophy or German. So I'd rather teach you guys and my listeners and anyone else who's willing. I'd rather teach, how to be, teach, them, teach you how to be a private lender, how to make a little bit more money, how to, take, how to help take control of your life and your finances. So what does that mean? Well, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a flag in the sand right now on this episode. When I started this podcast, I told three people in private that I was going to do a podcast. And once I told them that, it was up to me to figure it out. So it was, it was a little bit of the you know, ready, fire, aim approach here with the podcast. And I'm going to do the same thing with something I've, I've started called the Private Lender Academy. So I can teach folks, just like with this podcast, I can teach you, I can give you hopefully, you know, value bombs, golden nuggets, some insight, and hopefully by the time you finish listening to an episode, your mind is, is at least, hopefully the hamster is running in the wheel, you know, getting some ideas. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up with a risk, I'm trying to develop a risk tolerance test for free. This is free. This will be on the website. You go take it. Figure out, look, private lending is not for everybody, okay? Some people like that 1%, that half percent, whatever. They just want it, they want it safe. They want it backed by the FDIC, you know? And God bless you if you do. Go knock yourself out. I'm not going to try to discourage you from that because that's who you are, and you got to be you. And especially when it comes to investing, you got to do what you're comfortable with. But if you're willing to stretch your boundaries a little bit, take on just a little bit more risk that you can mitigate, then I'm also going to have a free Private Lender Academy intro to private lending. I want to give a free at least four to eight, I mean, at least four modules, if not more, of just the whole start of private lending and kind of mirror what I did. So IRA, take an old 401k. So it doesn't, it just doesn't disrupt your monthly cash flow. You can take an old 401k, roll it into an IRA, start lending, and you don't have to worry about any taxes. You don't have to worry about any tax liability while it's in a tax-deferred account, whether that be a traditional IRA, rollover IRA, or a Roth. And I highly, highly recommend get a Roth IRA. Start converting money into a Roth. I'm a big proponent and a big believer of tax the seeds and not the crop. So I personally am, little by little, 
taking all of my IRAs, my wife's IRAs, old 401ks, and rolling them in, or converting them, not rolling them, but converting them into Roths. Now, some of that is within Wall Street. I don't hate Wall Street. I like Wall Street, especially for the last two years or so. However, there are other ways. I'm the Private Lender Podcast host, so yeah, I'm going to try to get people to, to loan money to real estate investors. And if you do this, and if you think, you know, this all sounds good, Keith, but it's a little too involved for me. It's a little too much. Don't worry, because there are what I like to call the gone fish. Excuse me. <clears throat> there are what I like to call the gone fishing options, where you can loan your money to a hard money lender. You'll make about 8%, and the hard money lender does all the work. They go look at the property that they analyze the deal. They make sure insurance is taken out on the property. They do all the hard work. They're going to borrow your money at about 7 8%, give or take. And then they're going to loan it out to somebody who's flipping a house or a landlord for three to six, nine, or 12 months. And they're going to make the spread. They're going to charge 12%, 14%. And they're going to make the spread. That's how the hard money lender makes their money. But from the private lender perspective, what a beautiful way to get your feet wet. If you're nervous about getting out there and loaning, and look, my whole goal with all this is I want to take banks out of the equation for real estate investors. And with the advent of blockchain and everything that's coming down, I, I really believe that's possible. So to get your feet wet, if you're a little timid, you're a little skeptical, you can put your money with a hard money lender. And I'll have some hard money lenders coming on the show here soon uh, that will, will borrow your money. They will close and assign their first position lien to you. So you have first position lien. So if anything happens and you're not paid, you go for, foreclose on that property, you take the property over, and then you can go sell it yourself. Get your money back and maybe a little more. I call it the gone fishing approach. Give it to the hard money lender. Let them do the work. Now, I haven't done this myself. I've been very active in my lending, but it's an option out there. It's an option that's available to you if you're interested. So anyway, I think I've rambled on enough for the time being. I want to thank you again for listening. And remember, I'll be teaching a class May 31st at the Rich Club. Go to richclub.org for more details. And I will be at the Quest IRA Expo in Dallas, August 25th and 26th. And if you guys, if anyone out there is going to Podcast Movement in Philadelphia, I do plan to make an appearance there. So look me up. And before this episode ends, I, I do want to correct myself. I do realize that Muhammad lived a heck of a lot longer than 600 years ago. I think it was around the years four or 600. But, um, you know, hey, I was on a rant. Uh, it's a beautiful day. Cocktails are flowing. I didn't want to not record and keep my schedule. Wanted to uh, reach out. So, yeah, um, I hope that uh, you guys uh, enjoyed this one, this rant. I hope it was coherent. I, I want to thank you for, for making it this far. You've, you, you've stayed on for longer than 20 minutes, which is, is commendable. And I um, also want to say I, you know, I've got, I, I'm just really looking forward to what the future holds for this podcast and for the Private Lender Academy. Um, I'm going to branch out a little and get into uh, more uh, mindset uh, in, in the future, uh, I'm also going to you know talk about building the teams, uh, the lawyers, the inspectors, uh, closing agents, title agents, all that all that kind of stuff. Um, going to get into that, but also uh, going to go into left field a little bit. And you know, those who know me personally know that that makes a heck of, a heck of a lot of sense. Um, and I also want to thank those who have reached out to me recently. I'd like to thank Matthew B in Austin. I'd like to thank uh, Tanya for reaching out and letting me know about the uh, amortization schedule that wasn't working on the website. Uh, I'm going to reach out. I'd like to say thanks to James Toller as well. Um, you know, please let me know what you'd like to hear. You know, leave me good comments, uh, bad comments, uh, info at privatelenderpodcast.com. And please, 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 I, I do want to reach as many people as possible. And the easiest way to do that is to get your ratings and reviews. So iTunes, thinks that the more reviews a podcast gets, the better it is. So I am going to shamelessly ask you, if you haven't yet, please, and you're hearing my voice, please go to iTunes. 
or the podcast app on your phone and leave me a rating and review. If, if, I, if I deserve one star, give me one star. If I deserve five, I would graciously accept five stars, but please leave a review. And if you have any comments, what you'd like to hear, you have any questions or any issues with the website, please let me know at info at privatelenderpodcast.com. And that's going to wrap it up. I think I've done, uh, I've rambled long enough. So I just want to wish everyone listening right now healthy, <laughs> healthy, listen to me. Wow, I'm going to go drink with my neighbor some more. But I do wish everyone happy and prosperous lending and happy investing. I'll see you on the next episode. Take care. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Private Lender Podcast with your host, Keith Baker. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit privatelenderpodcast.com. If you enjoyed today's episode, please rate and review, and we'll catch you next time. Pay that man his money.